this countdown, we have the NSA spy hubs. We all know that the NSA is spying on us, okay? That's old news. I mean, in 2013, former contractor for the CIA, Edward Snowden, revealed that the NSA was collecting phone records of millions of Americans and spying on us through our phone calls. Well, it turns out they have multiple top secret bases. Half of them, we don't even know where they're located. We just know that they're out there somewhere. These spy hubs are often windowless skyscrapers. There are some in Atlanta, Dallas, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, and of course, Washington DC. These buildings though, aren't regular buildings. No, no, of course not. They are highly secure and guarded. In fact, they are built to withstand terrorist attacks, nuclear attacks, and natural disasters. So not only do we not know where they're located, we don't know what they're doing in all of these hubs besides spying on American citizens. So you better behave. They're watching. Always watching. <laughs> Moving on to number nine, we have Diego Garcia. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. Diego Garcia is a US occupied small island in the Indian Ocean. Technically, it's an overseas territory of Great Britain. In 1966, the people on the island were employed as contract farmers. They were working on coconut plantations. But from 1968 to 1973, the farm workers were kicked off the island by the UK government so that the US slash UK military could have a joint base on the island. So in 1966, the United States was given the rights to use the island if they forgot about the 14 million debt that the UK owed them. Now the island is used by government officials and it's highly, highly guarded. In fact, rumor has it that the island is home to a secret prison. Rumor also has it that the Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 that went missing without a trace actually just landed on this island. Not only that, but apparently rumor has it that this base is used by the CIA to torture prisoners. There's some crazy theories out there. I hope one day we'll find out if any of them are true. Then in 2009, the US military evicted several thousand of the island's local residents. Why they did this is still so top secret. Like they don't know why they got evicted. I really wish we knew. Something fishy is going on over there. Coming in at number eight, we have the Dugway Proving Ground. Located in Utah, the Dugway Proving Ground is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. Like who knows how many and what kinds of dark deadly weapons they are building and testing there. The base also contains top secret US military research documents, which is one of the reasons why the government doesn't want you to know about it. Now, in 1968, the unbelievable happened at the base. On March 13th, a high-speed jet sprayed 320 gallons of nerve gas VX around the air in a test. This is so deadly that 10 milligrams can kill people. It'll stop your respiratory muscles from working and then you'll just choke to death. Anyways, it sprayed in an area near a farm. The next day, thousands of sheep were found dead. The government denied that this was their fault, but people aren't buying it. Either way, they paid the rancher who lost a sheep over $300,000 and tried to keep the situation hush hush. So the government definitely doesn't want us to know any of that, so, but I know it and I shared it with you. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, we have Camp Perry. Camp Perry, otherwise called The Farm, is a top secret training facility run by the CIA. The place is used to train CIA officers as well as officers working in the Defense Intelligence Agency. One of the reasons why this place is so secretive is because they don't want the identity of their top secret agents to be leaked. Because then, hello, they wouldn't be secret agents anymore, would they? Now, listen to just how intense this camp is. So former CIA officer Bill Wagner went to a three week interrogation course at the farm in 1970. He revealed that the people learning to be good interrogators practiced techniques such as sleep deprivation, mock execution, and would deliberately taint food, which exposes that CIA interrogators use these techniques in real life. Of course, the US government has never formally acknowledged the existence of this camp. 
although many people know that it's real. Coming in at number six, we have Area 51. Of course, I had to put this one on the list. Hello, everyone wants to know what the heck is going on at that top secret base. Like, are the rumors true? Do they really have animals hiding there? Are they conducting unethical tests on humans? Area 51 is home to a number of conspiracy theories because it's so highly protected and secretive. Seriously, people have gotten killed for trying to even get close to the building. This has led a lot of people to believe that the military is up to something. What do you think goes on in Area 51? Let me know in the comments below. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Sherman Kent School for Intelligence Analysis. This is a training school in Reston, Virginia for CIA analysts. The school has been given the nickname The Vault because of how many locks and alarms and guards it has. So basically, the school opened in May of 2000 and it apparently teaches members many important things, such as foreign languages, regional studies, satellite image analysis, wiretap transcript analysis, and media report analysis. So basically, everything you think a spy would need to know. This place is basically spy school, which is super cool. Now, like all places on this list, this one is also heavily guarded. It is located on the second floor of a five-story structure. The glass windows are smoked to prevent people from looking in and spying. The building also contains sensors to prevent eavesdropping from outside. And like I said, it's protected by a number of locks and alarms and surveillance. In our fourth spot, we have Menwith Hill. Menwith Hill is a Royal Air Force base located in the UK. In fact, it is said to be one of the most secretive places in the UK. First off, the place is super odd. Like there's a bunch of white domes all over the place that look like giant golf balls. Like I feel like it's just the government's own mini putt or golfing range or something like that, but it's not. This site is said to be the largest electronic monitoring system on the planet. So basically, it's a place where they spy on us, monitoring our every move. The site first opened to spy on the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Since then, we don't know exactly what they're spying on. But it's a vital part of the NSA surveillance network. In 2012, it was believed that the base was involved in a number of drone attacks. However, this has never been confirmed. On top of that, it was revealed that the NSA used the base to, and I quote, aid a significant number of capture kill operations. That is terrifying, wow. Moving on to number three, we have Kapustin Yar. Kapustin Yar is basically Russian's version of Area 51. It is a top secret base created by the USSR. It was used for developing the Soviet space program. But now, rumor has it that it is home to aliens. Apparently, people saw a large red sphere flying in the sky right above this base. Others claim to have seen three-eyed aliens wearing silver overalls there. I mean, hey, at least he's stylish. In fact, most alien sightings in Russia occur near this top secret base. Coincidence? I think not. It could be that aliens are trying to escape from this base or something like that. There's even rumors of this base being used to conduct alien autopsies. It's pretty creepy. I don't even want to know if I want to find out what goes on in there. In our second spot, we have the Secret Super Command Bunker. Apparently, the Pentagon is planning to build a secret command bunker 3,500 feet under Washington, D.C. What's the purpose of this bunker, you ask? Well, just in case of nuclear war, the bunker will keep people safe from the nukes. Apparently, the pandemic shook the US government and now they, and I quote, put plans in place to ensure critical elements of the US government can keep functioning in the midst of an extreme crisis. So they're basically gonna be like, sick, every man for themselves, peace out, and then just disappear into the secret bunker. And in our number one spot, we have Porton Down. Close to Stonehenge, there's a place called Porton Down, which is basically a massive experimental testing center. It's known for working on chemical and biological weapons, as well as dealing with dangerous pathogens. The stuff that goes on in there is dark, and I mean dark. 
Starting in 1945, the government began testing nerve gas on real humans. These testings on humans went until 1989. In the end, more than 3,400 people had nerve gas tested on them. In 1953, a man named Ronald Madison died after being subjected to liquid nerve gas. Not only did they lie and say they were no longer testing the gas on humans, but they denied that the nerve gas was the cause of his death. Recently, however, it was discovered that they are now testing this gas and other dangerous weapons on animals. What else goes on in there is unknown. Like, what if they're still running unethical tests on humans? It's crazy. Starting off this countdown, we have Castle Black. Now, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you might be like, whoa, Castle Black, is it named after the headquarters in the show? Well, it actually might be. This base, however, is very different. Basically, Castle Black is an American military base located in Syria. Sadly, it's not a castle at all, so the name is deceiving. But anyways, this base is for special forces operations. In fact, we only found out about it recently, after it was mentioned in documents obtained by The Intercept via the Freedom Information Act. What goes down in there is largely unknown. I actually think it's quite clever to name it after a fictional place from a very popular TV show. Because when I searched it, the first page of sites are all about Game of Thrones. So, in a way, it's hidden on the web. Moving on to number nine, we have Bohemian Grove. What happens at the Grove stays at the Grove. I feel like that's the motto they go by. The Bohemian Club is this group of rich men who meet in the Bohemian Grove in California every July. Among the attendees are past and present presidents, government members, and business leaders. What goes on there is really unknown. Some say it's like a cult. And rumor has it that they perform live sacrifices there. I don't know if it's humans or animals, but that's a no from me. In 2000, Texas based filmmaker Alex Jones and his cameraman snuck into the camp and filmed this ceremony called The Cremation of the Care. Sounds creepy and looks creepy. He caught a bunch of individuals wearing cloaks standing over a large fire doing this weird ritual. What these individuals of high power do there is a big mystery. All we know is that they're up to no good. In our eighth spot, we have Area 6. This is a top secret base that we don't know too much about. In fact, it was only discovered in 2016. Someone was on Google Earth when they spotted this weird air base in the Nevada desert. It was unnamed on Google Earth. Obviously, the government didn't want us to find it, but too late for that. After that, it was confirmed that this was a government base. This base is about 12 miles northeast of Area 51. Apparently, in 1945 to 1995, over 1,000 nuclear tests were conducted there. It's also believed to be a site used to test military drones. I mean, you can try researching all about Area 6, but not a lot will come up. That's how secretive this place is. And no matter what online articles say about this place, we will never truly know what goes on behind those closed doors. In our seventh spot today, we have Pine Gap, Australia. Located deep in the Australian outback is Pine Gap, another top secret military base. In fact, this base has been named Australia's Area 51. So this place is used by Australia and the US government and is a satellite surveillance base. The NSA uses the facility to collect internet and telephone records. We found this out back in 2013 when Edward Snowden revealed some highly classified info on the NSA and how they're spying on everyone. However, conspiracy theorists believe that this base is home to one of the most terrifying surveillance systems out there, the Echelon. We don't know for sure though, and we might never know. Moving on to number six, we have S4. Area 51 might not be home to aliens slash UFOs anymore. That's right, you heard me. So theory goes that Area 51 has moved their alien life to a new nearby base. S4. They did this because, hello, everyone believes that Area 51 has aliens and UFOs. And if it's true, they don't want anyone knowing where they're being kept. So this theory surfaced after a lot of strange activity started happening at this base. People claim to have seen UFOs flying around the base and then landing nearby. Honestly, I don't even know what to believe anymore. Also, go ahead and Google it. Go ahead, try to find information about S4. What's out there is very scarce. So the government is doing a good job of keeping this base a secret. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the unnamed base. This is another base discovered by Google Earth. Again, had it not been for Google, this base might have still been a secret. So this base is located in Saudi Arabia and is another base the US government has not recognized yet. It's 
located deep in the Arabian Desert, meaning the government really didn't want us to find it. If that's the case, then they need to have a word with Google Earth because they're just out there exposing them. Now, according to two former American intelligence officers, they thought the base was a drone center. So it could be a base for Predator and Reaper drones. There is an airstrip there, so that does make sense. But still, we don't know for sure. And you need to count how many times I say that in this video because it's true. Like, we don't know and it's freaky. Moving on to number four, we have the Wright Patterson Air Force Base. This base is said to be one of the most mysterious military bases in the US. During the Cold War, this base was where military scientists would reverse engineer Russian aircrafts. Even though the Cold War is over, the base is still in operation. They're now just moving on to other projects. What they're working on now remains a huge mystery. Some say they're building new spy planes there, or are reverse engineering foreign tech. We don't know, but rumor has it that this base is home to a lot of extraterrestrial activity. Conspiracy theorists think that this place is where scientists reverse engineer alien technology. That would be absolutely insane if that's true. So I hope it's not. Coming in at number three, we have Tolicha Peak Electronic Combat Range. Yeah, you heard me correctly. I have never heard of electronic combat until now, but this is the place where pilots get trained to deal with electronic warfare. In case of an attack, they know how to properly respond and fight back. Now, it's unknown how old this base has been around for, but it was found in images from the area dating back to 1984, so maybe around then or the 1970s. But the images were blurry, so they can't verify that for sure. And that's all we know about this base. It's so low key that it's actually nearly impossible to spot on a map. Again, even Google has barely any information out there for me. In our second spot, we have Harvey Point Defense Testing Activity Facility. That was a mouthful. Harvey Point is a military base owned by the Department of Defense. It's located near the city of Hartford in North Carolina. And apparently living near there is an absolute nightmare. People have described black helicopters constantly flying over at night. And they often see buses with blacked out windows traveling there. Not only that, someone said, and I quote, mysterious trucks haul in old limousines and haul out bullet riddled blackened ones. End of quote. Then there are the bombs. Apparently, a lot of explosions go off there. Some residents wake up terrified by the noise. In fact, sometimes homes shake so much that they develop cracks. So this area is where they set off powerful explosions to apparently recreate terrorist attacks. They have been known to blow up cars, safes, I mean, you get it. Retired Sheriff Julian Broughton said, and I quote, my son works there as security but he doesn't tell me nothing and I don't ask. Over the years though, it has been revealed that it's also a training facility, basically spy school for the CIA, FBI, and SEALs. And in our number one spot today, we have Dulce Base. This one is the creepiest place on this list. So the small town of Dulce in New Mexico is said to have a secret underground facility where they do a number of crazy experiments. The first time someone mentioned this base was back in the 1930s. From there, the room Rumors skyrocketed. Now it's believed that there is a seven story compound beneath the city, and that's where there are human animal hybrids and human alien hybrids. Or that's where humans and aliens work together on mind control experiments. It's crazy. But those are just rumors. We're not even 100% sure if this base even exists or what. But guess what? This place is pretty close to Skinwalker Ranch. Coincidence? I think not. And there have been a number of UFO sightings in that area. Coincidence? I think not. Starting off this countdown, we have Amchipka Island. Located in Alaska, this island is so secretive that sections of it are blurred out on Google Maps. The government doesn't want anyone finding out what's going on there. Now, from the 1950s to the 1970s, Amchipka Island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. As for what they are doing there nowadays, it's still unknown. I mean, apparently they are running tests there to see if the island has any radioactive leakage. If there isn't, then in 2025, they're looking at it because becoming a wildlife reserve. But if that's all the government is doing and planning, then how come it's blurred out on Google Earth? 
What don't they want us seeing? Rumor has it that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activity there. Maybe they're still doing nuclear testing. Who knows? Moving on to number nine, we have the Cheyenne Mountain Complex. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. This is an underground base located nearly half a mile under a granite mountain. It is run by the Air Force Space Command. In the late 1950s, it was used as a command and control center against long range Soviet bombers. Then in 1967, it was taken over by the Aerospace Defense Command Combat Operations Center. Now, this base is very secure. Cure. First off, it is comprised of six tunnels. Each tunnel is three stories tall, and the whole base is secured if a nuclear explosion occurs. In fact, it's protected by a 25-ton blast door. Those doors close within 45 seconds of the blast occurring, so they are well prepared. In our eighth spot, we have Campbell Barracks. This base is used by the Australian Special Air Service, and it's where they run counter-terrorism training. But the Australian government doesn't really want to talk about it. I tried to Google more about it, but that's literally the main thing it says. So yeah, the government really doesn't want information about this place getting out. It makes it a pretty big mystery. In our seventh spot today, we have Mount Weather. Mount Weather is an emergency operations center located in Virginia. Now, what is this place? Well, we don't really know much about it. In fact, this place is considered one of USA's best kept secrets. What we do know though, is that they have a secret underground bunker there. So in case of an emergency, they can keep all the government officials there in the bunker. They even have their own police and fire department and laws for this place. Like they are prepared for an apocalypse. They are prepared for the end of the world. In our sixth spot today, we have the Floating Sea Bases. Located in South China, the government has a number of secret bases just floating in the ocean. No one is really sure what China is doing with these bases. Some think it's a way to claim some of the waterways and undersea resources, or it's a way to control shipping and trade. But like I said, no one really knows for sure. And if you get too close to these bases, you'll be told to leave immediately. This has happened to a number of pilots flying in the area. Another theory is that China is planning to build underwater deep sea bases. These bases will eventually connect to the ones above water. But like I said, who really knows? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the HARP research. The HARP research or H-A-A-R-P stands for High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program and it is located in Alaska. Now, what do they do at this base? Well, there's a lot of controversy and conspiracy theories surrounding it. So they analyze the ionosphere, place where the Earth's atmosphere meets space. They do this with a high frequency transmitter. Now here's where the conspiracy theories come in. Many people believe that they are using this base to control the weather or even to mind control us. It's crazy, I know. Theory also goes on to say that the 2010 Haiti earthquake was caused by them. In our fourth spot, we have the US Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Disease. That was a mouthful. But this is the place where they study deadly diseases and research into countermeasure for biological warfare. In fact, the place is filled with infectious agents. Obviously, they're highly sealed off, so there's no risk of exposure. But still, if anything happened, they could legit release another plague. Of course, a number of people believe that this is the site where the government is engineering new viruses to release into the public. Or that over years, they have accidentally created new viruses and then accidentally released them into the public. Either way, that would be incredibly scary. In our third spot, we have the Underwater Area 51. So apparently Idaho has its very own Area 51 and it's located completely underwater. The lake that it's located in is 1200 feet deep and it's pretty remote. So it's deep enough to run tests and it's secluded enough to keep the nosy Karens out. Apparently the main purpose of this base is to test new equipment like submarines. Of course, a bunch of people think that there's something fishy going on down there. Get it? Fishy? Anyways, locals have claimed that ever since the military had their way with this lake, weird things have been happening there. Like UFO sightings all around the base. Hence why it was given the name the Underwater Area 51. 
Who knows, maybe they are running tests on aliens and maybe also the Loch Ness Monster. Coming in at number two, we have Raven Rock Mountain Complex. This is an underground nuclear bunker located in Pennsylvania. It was built during the Cold War to help the Pentagon with their missions. Basically, it was created so that if America ever launched a nuclear strike or were a target of one, they could just hide out there and be safe while the rest of humanity just dies. How nice of them. But check this out. In 2006, Defense Department officials held a military exercise at Raven Rock. It was to see how well the facility would respond to a flu pandemic. I mean, I'm not one to start conspiracies, but it's like they knew a deadly pandemic was on its way. And in our number one spot today, we have Jeanette Island. Located in Russia, this island is believed to be the home of a secret Russian military base. Want to know how top secret it is? Well, if you Google this island's supposed coordinates on Google Earth, all you'll see is water, not even land. That's because they had it removed entirely from Google Maps. Before that, the island was just blurred out, and if you tried to zoom in, the screen would just go all black. As a result, people believe that there's a concealed Russian military base located there, and a substantial one at that. I mean, the whole thing is wiped completely from the maps, so they want to make people think that it doesn't exist. Starting off this countdown, we have Hoya Bashu Forest. This Romanian forest is a nice place to visit and it's quite popular. They have bike trails, hiking paths, and even archery ranges. Sounds really nice, right? Well, maybe. But this forest is also known as the creepiest forest in the world. Apparently a number of UFOs have been spotted in this area. In 1968, a military technician named Emil Barnea claimed he got proof of a UFO in the clearing. People thought he just made this up, but as The Independent said, and I quote, what differentiates this story from other UFO claims is that Barnea had nothing to gain from reporting the sighting and everything to lose. The communist government equated a belief in the paranormal with madness and state sabotage. Barnea lost his job in a country which had no support for the sect. So it seems silly for him to just make this up, meaning he probably didn't make it up and he actually saw this UFO. To this day, people have claimed to see floating orbs of light. Some even say they have heard weird voices coming from the woods and have seen apparitions. Gets even creepier because apparently sometimes electronic devices fail in the forest, and photos taken there have sometimes revealed creepy figures in the background. And of course, there are stories of people vanishing in the forest, only to reappear years later having no memory of what happened to them during those years. So could it be that this forest is haunted by the paranormal? Coming in at number nine, we have Loch Ness, Scotland. This is the lake famous for the sighting of the Loch Ness Monster, aka Nessie, which is one of the reasons as to why this place is so mysterious. So it's a large, deep, freshwater lake in the Scottish Highlands. Over the years, a number of people have claimed to see Nessie lurking in the waters. And of course, there's that famous photo that someone captured of Nessie. Reports of this monster date back to ancient times. Drawings were found carved in stones in the area that depict a weird monster with flippers. Then in 565 AD, the first written account of Nessie appeared. Apparently, a man was swimming in the lake when he was bit by the monster. Then in 1933, sightings of the Loch Ness Monster increased. One account was from a couple that saw it. They claimed it to be a dragon or prehistoric monster. So who knows what's really going on in that lake? Maybe it is Nessie's home and that it is the sole survivor of the long extinct Plesiosaurus. Moving on to number eight, we have the Devil's Sea. About 100 kilometers south of Tokyo, there's a spot known as the Devil's Sea or Dragon's Triangle. Basically, it is said to be the Pacific's very own Bermuda Triangle. A number of ships and planes have disappeared in this area. In fact, one time, nine American ships went missing in that area in perfect weather. To this day, they haven't been found, and we literally don't know what happened to them. Due to this reason, it is considered one of the most dangerous marine locations around the world. Now, it was also given the name Dragon's Triangle due to the urban legend of dragons living off of the coast of Japan near there. In 1952, the Japanese government sent 31 individuals to go investigate this area. The whole team disappeared without a trace. Their bodies never found. As a result, some people believe this area is a gate to a parallel universe, or that aliens have something to do with it. 
To this day, we still really don't know. In our seventh spot, we have Marfa, Texas. Marfa, Texas is famously known for something they call the Marfa Lights. Basically, it's these weird bright lights that appear at night outside the town of Marfa in West Texas. And no, it's not just stars that they're seeing. They have been described as bright colorful orbs about the size of basketballs. They can glow white, blue, yellow, or red. Unlike stars, these lights can move up and down, disappear, reappear, and even split into two. Apparently, even actor James Dean saw these lights while filming the movie Giant. But no one knows what they really are. But of course, they're rumored to be UFOs, ghosts, or even fairies. Coming in at number six, we have Stonehenge. Located in Wiltshire, England, the Stonehenge is one of the UK's most famous landmarks. It consists of a bunch of standing stones in a ring, with some stones placed on top of each other. In fact, it's considered the UK's most mysterious site. First off, we don't know how people managed to build these huge structures like 5,000 plus years ago when they didn't have any construction machinery. Like the stones themselves weigh around 25 tons. There's no way they were just lugging those around themselves. Theory goes that they were somehow dragging the rocks though by having them lubricated in pig fat. Again, we still don't know. Not only that, but we don't know why they were built in the first place. Many scholars agree that Stonehenge was once a burial ground. Others believe it might have been a place of worship. But again, we don't know. And count how many times I said that in this video. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Coral Castle. This is a beautiful rock garden that I personally would love to see one day. Located in Homestead, Florida, this garden was created by one man and one man only which many people find hard to believe. The garden is made up of more than a thousand tons of sedimentary rock, which was then sculpted into different shapes like a crescent moon. Some were even made into chairs and tables. Legend goes that this man built the structure after being abandoned by his lover on their wedding day. Uh -huh. He channeled his heartache into building this structure to prove to her that he could do something amazing. I'm telling you, it's amazing what a bad breakup can do to a person. Here's the thing though. This man was very tiny. He weighed only 100 pounds and he only had a fourth grade education. So people are wondering how he managed to build such an intricate structure by himself. Scientists claim that even Albert Einstein couldn't have done it. Aliens! <laughs> in our fourth spot today, we have New Grange. Located in Ireland, this is said to be the oldest and most famous prehistoric site in all of Ireland. Built around 3100 BC, Newgrange is a round structure made out of wood, clay, and stone. The roof is covered in grass. Inside, the structure is a long passage that leads to a cross-shaped chamber. This is said to have been a tomb. Now, a lot of thought and detail went into building this. It's completely waterproof still to this day. And the entrance of the tomb was positioned in a way so that during the winter solstice, the sun would be in through the opening and down the passageway, which was the perfect light source. Now, what we need to know is who was this tomb built for and why? Whoever it was for, they had to have been pretty significant. In our third spot, we have the Michigan Triangle. The Michigan Triangle is Lake Michigan's very own Bermuda Triangle. Just like the Bermuda Triangle, this area in Lake Michigan has been associated with a number of disappearances. Apparently, a lot of ships have sunk in that area and planes have crashed. Even entire crews have gone missing from their boats. The first incident can be dated back to the 17th century, when ships were out exploring new routes for trade. In 1679, a ship named Le Griffin was out sailing to find a northwest passage to China and Japan. Everything was going fine until they reached the Michigan Triangle. From there, they disappeared without a trace. The scariest part? No bodies or shipwreck has ever been found. It's literally like these people disappear into thin air. Moving on to number two, we have the Plain of Jars. Located in Laos, the Plain of Jars is considered one of the most mysterious archeological sites in the world. The area is filled with 2,000 large ancient stone jars. They are approximately 10 feet tall and weigh several tons. To this day, their origins are unknown. Now everyone has a lot of questions. Number one, how did they make these big jars? Slash, how did they make that many? And two, what were they used for? A recent theory suggests that the jars were used for the dead. Basically, a dead body was placed in there to then be exposed to the elements. Then when only their bones were left, they would take them and bury them. 
but again, we still don't know for sure. And in our number one spot today, we have Roswell, New Mexico. Of course, this place is associated with UFOs and aliens. Apparently in 1947, a UFO crashed there. A ranch worker claimed he found debris from the crash. Later, it was collected by the military and they were like, oh yeah, that, that's just, that's just part of a weather balloon. Lies, no one believed that. We all know they were covering up the fact that it was part of a UFO. Since then, hundreds of UFO sightings have been accounted for in the area. It seems like Roswell is the hotspot for extraterrestrial activity. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Tower of London. I have been here myself. I did a little tour, took some photos, and I had no idea how dark the history really was here. Kings were beheaded, queens were horribly beheaded. Witnessing an operation is pretty common in the Tower of London, of course, with this grim history. A common sighting is Thomas Beckett, a martyred saint, and of course, the Anne Boleyn. If you visit the Tower of London, you might catch a glimpse of the second wife of King Henry VIII. Anne Boleyn was found guilty of treason. She had been charged with having sexual relationships with five others, including Lord Rochford, AKA her brother, George Boleyn. Yeah, a lot of tea in that one some Game of Thrones stuff, apparently. She had also apparently had relations with Sir Henry Norris, the king's groom of the stool, and on top of all this, Anne was also found guilty of conspiring to kill her husband. Now, it has since been proven that all of these crimes were a bunch of rubbish, Anne wasn't even around when all these things even took place. She was still recovering from the birth of her daughter, future Elizabeth I, in October 1533. So there's no way she's fooling around with the groom of the stool, you know what I mean? She was busy at the time. All parties involved were still executed on Tower Hill, in May 1563, and then two days later, Anne Boleyn was executed for her crimes. For her crimes, rather. A lot of dark history. Number nine, Transylvania. Heading over to Romania. I often forget that Transylvania is a real place with real history, and not just an animated Adam Sandler family film. One of the most famous castles in Transylvania is Bran Castle. This is the castle most commonly associated with Dracula, with Bram Stoker's Dracula. And of course, it belonged to the very real Queen Marie. The castle has seen many horrors back in the Middle Ages, and locals believing in undead souls that haunt villagers at night, yeah, that surely doesn't help you sleep. You may have heard of Vlad the Impaler, aka Vlad Dracula. Well, this guy was a brutal ruler. His methods of punishment back in the mid 1400s were awful, as his name hint towards, they were specific. Transylvania is also home to the haunted Hawaii Bakui Forest, a paranormal hotspot. Many claim a UFO also touched down in the middle of the 20th century over this forest too. So we got vampires, the undead, and UFOs, all in Transylvania. What a trip. Nice, let's do it. Let's go visit, sounds fun. Number eight, the Terracotta Army. The tomb of Emperor Qixi Hong, China's first emperor. In this tomb, we can find 6,000 statues, but they all have unique carvings on their face. As if to suggest, they are all custom statues accurately representing a soldier, all 6,000. That's amazing, that's impressive. Back in 1974, farmers were digging up a well. This was 20 miles east of Xi'an, and they stumbled upon a pit that uncovered all of this history. They found this, they found this entire burial chamber. We believe there were around 700,000 workers they were putting together this masterpiece for three decades. Archaeologists have discovered 8,000 statues in total with horses and chariots, the whole shebang, and of course the emperor's tomb. A grim detail here is that in the emperor's tomb, streams of mercury were put around the floor of his burial chamber. And in 2005, over 4,000 samples all tested positive for mercury. So to this day, less than 1% of his tomb has actually been excavated. It's simply too dangerous. The emperor also believed that after he had passed, he would have to face the spirits of his enemies again. So he wanted to be prepared even after death, hence the army. The emperor decided to close the tomb though before the workers even had a chance to get out. He was worried his enemies had already found out, so he just trapped them in there. It's horrible. So yeah, there's a lot of statues and dark histories in this one. Number seven, Turkey Gladiator Arena. Ah yes, another arena, another staple in history, filled with gruesome combat, all in the name of entertainment. An 1800 year old arena was discovered back in 2020, while we were all, you know, stuck inside doing nothing. Meanwhile, a 90 meter wide amphitheater was found in the ancient city of Mastura. Its purpose was thought to be the same as the Roman Colosseum, you know, to host these massive professional gladiator events with wild animals, and it turns out that's exactly the case. Yeah, humans are the same everywhere. This was around 200 AD, when the Severan dynasty was ruled the Roman Empire. If betting on animal fights was your thing, you'd have to travel all the way to this place to do so. Yeah, hope you have trail shoes and good knees. 
I wouldn't make it. No, no way. I'd be like, yeah, place some bets for me. I am not going anywhere. Have you seen that hill? No way. Number six, Highgate Cemetery. Heading over to England yet again. London's Highgate Cemetery is beautiful, but back in the early 1800s, it was booming. The city's population was growing, meaning that more people were dying, of course. So now we needed more land for bodies. Graves were being placed in between houses and shops. Not really ideal when it comes to a loved one being buried. So Parliament decided to step in and help out. They built seven cemeteries and the third was built in 1839 and that was Highgate Cemetery. Come 1854, the cemetery was full. It was beautiful. Everybody wanted to be buried there. What an odd desire that is. But look at it. How inviting is that? It was so popular that they added another 20 acres. More bodies, no problem, let's do it. But by the time World War II came along, the cemetery was completely abandoned. And in 1960, the cemetery was officially closed. Buildings began to fall onto themselves. The landscaping is now just a mess. It certainly looks the part now. It looks like a haunted cemetery. And today, many stories are passed around of these men in dark robes, said to practice dark rituals in Highgate. Now, it's not uncommon to see apparitions in a cemetery, but red-eyed demons? Highgate's another level, my friends. Number five, the Crooked Forest. Forests are already creepy. This one looks straight out of a Tim Burton film. Let's talk about it. The Crooked Forest, Poland. There's around 400 odd shaped pine trees near the town Grafina. These trees are about 90 years old and all these trees from the base, they immediately go towards the north and they slowly curve back towards the sky almost like an upside down question mark. Despite the odd bend, these trees are otherwise healthy. There's been many theories, but none of them really stick as to why these trees look that way. Some suggest that it was a gravitational anomaly, but that's a little too far-fetched. This isn't, you know, interstellar. Other theories claim there were heavy snowfalls that weighed down the branches, and then they just, you know, slowly corrected themselves, but why is it just a select amount? I live in Canada, we have lots of snow. I've never seen any sleepy hollow trees in my entire life. My favorite theory is that farmers were trying to make the tree curved on purpose, to make stronger wheels. The green direction would have made for natural curved wheels, which means stronger. Again, seems a little too far-fetched. I don't know, I don't think growing a 90-year-old tree is the best way to make a wheel. But again, nobody knows. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. Number four, Valley of the Kings. We can't not include ancient Egyptian curses on this list. Terrifying places more mysterious than the Bermuda? Yeah, how about a pharaoh curse? Let's do it. Pharaohs of Egypt. It was said any thieves who enter or disturb the dead in Egypt shall be cursed and set to perish. How, how fun is that? Well, this applies to archeologists too. Howard Carter and his team back in the 1920s had come across the discovery of a lifetime. They found the tomb of King Tut, launching the study of Egyptology. And we're still finding tombs in Egypt to this day. Even last year, we found like 216 tombs. It was crazy. That place is a literal treasure chest. The thing is, after the discovery, some researchers on Carter's team started to feel under the weather. Maybe there was a bug going around, maybe it was too hot, or maybe it was the curse of the Pharaoh. Yeah, some men on his team perished from blood diseases or undisclosed circumstances. They're just like, yeah, we're not gonna tell you. Many of these ancient tombs have warnings. I think it's time we start listening to those. Number three, Newgrange tomb. Okay, time to get a little weird. Over in Ireland, there's a tomb built by Egyptians. It's called Newgrange, and it's as old as the pyramids, so the belief is that Egyptians also built this one. Checks out, makes sense. It was first discovered back in the late 1700s, and it's been closed ever since. It's a mystery who or what is inside, but the folklore surrounding the tomb is too good not to talk about. See, locals believe that this tomb is a gateway to another realm and that it was built by goblins. Yeah, and if and when this tomb is open, it's believed goblins will just all of a sudden come rushing out, like Harry Potter style. Evil goblins, that is, might I add. Wouldn't it be cool if goblins actually ran out were like, oh, really, this whole time? That explains the pyramids. That explains so much. Number two, Bangar Fort. Back in the 16th century, King Mado built a massive Bangar Fort in India. The population of this small town was around 1,000 at the time. It was a beautiful fort. Many considered this a luxury, of course, rightfully so. This thing looks like a set piece from Game of Thrones. It's beautiful. The legend has it that Princess Ratnavati, who at the time was living in the luxurious fort, she was the talk of the town. All these dudes were proposing left, right, and center, all trying to get her attention. Princes from all over would come in and try and take her hand. Then one day when visiting town, a magician named Skindia saw the princess shopping for perfumes. So he planned on using the black magic of Vishakaran on the princess. So he mixed it with the perfume that she was looking at, but it didn't work out. His plan failed. The princess caught on and she smashed the perfume at his feet, 
and then left. And as the bottle broke apart, the magician then cursed the entire fort and those living inside of it. Yep, started okay, got even worse. Only days later, a war erupted around the fort and there were many, many casualties. To this day, Bangar Fort is said to be extremely haunted. And finally, number one, Huska Castle. Ah yes, the demon castle, let's do it. According to folklore, the Huska Castle, which is located just north of Prague in Czech Republic, is built over a bottomless pit that leads directly into hell. Yeah, the legend claims the 13th century King Ottokar II offered a pardon to any prisoner who agreed agreed to be lowered into the pit in order to report what was down there. The first prisoner who was lowered into the pit only lasted 30 seconds before he started screaming in fear. Sounds pretty horrible. Whatever he saw was no good. Maybe it was a cave spider. That ought to do it for me. Legend goes that when he was brought back up, his hair turned white and he apparently saw these half human, half demon creatures that were flying through the darkness with scaly wings. Nice. That's literally the pits of hell. The castle was built over a hole without things like a water source or any kitchens, anything like that. And it's said they did this because it wasn't actually meant to be used by humans, but rather it was meant to capture the demons should they ever rise from this mysterious hole. Nice. Even demons have a place to crash. How lovely is that? We can all sleep knowing that the demons are okay. They're all comfortable. We're good. In our number 10 spot, we have Centralia, Pennsylvania. In the 60s, a fire broke out in the coal mines and apparently this fire has never stopped. Yep, that's right, the underground is still burning since 1962. It continues to burn thanks to the coal reserves and it will continue to keep burning as long as oxygen flows in. Before the fire, the town was poppin'. LOL. Okay, fine. 60s poppin'. You know, the white circular glasses, big flipped out hair and loud prints and the Beach Boys playing everywhere. <laughs> That's my romanticized vision of the 60s anyway. There were 1,435 people in the town and once the fire started, they all left. Minus 10 people that don't want to leave. Apparently the movie Silent Hill was based off of this town. Makes sense. I wonder if the 10 people are staying because they have a home that's been in their family for generations and they don't want to lose it. That would possibly make me stay. However, the fear of being burned to death would probably make me leave as well. If you're enjoying this video so far, smash that like button as it will really help us out. In our number 9 spot, we have Mount Vesuvius. Yep, there have been many volcanoes that have wiped out cities and this one in particular did quite a lot of damage. For the citizens of Pompeii in 79 AD, one day they were doing the washing and fighting on horseback. Guys, I tried to google what the heck normal people did in that time and you would be surprised how hard a simple question like this is to answer. Anyways, they were doing some washing and fighting somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> And the next, they were being hit by the violent Mount Vesuvius that was wiping them away. There were only a few survivors. The eruption left the town in ruins for a very, very long time. The eruption of the volcano is said to be one of the most catastrophic in human history, resulting in a very destructive earthquake after it, as well as many deaths from the air pollution. In our number eight spot, we have Greensburg, Kansas. In 2007, there was a tornado in Greensburg, Kansas that caused a great devastation to the town. It is said that about 95% of the town was completely destroyed, but the other 5% was also severely damaged. 11 people were killed in the tragedy, and after it, more than half of the population moved out of the town for good. But that honestly makes sense, because if the town was destroyed so badly, then it doesn't make sense to to stay, perhaps only to just help with the cleanup. Apparently during the rebuilding process, the town began to make some more greener choices and created a new building dedicated to leadership in energy and environmental design that runs on 100% renewable energy. So there's at least some good arising from such a tragedy. In our number seven spot, we have Kennett, California. In the early 1930s, the town of Kennett in California was known as a very important copper mining town. Apparently, it was the largest in the area until 1935 when it started to become flooded by Shasta Lake. It was flooded by the lake while the Shasta Dam was being created, unfortunately. The government had been considering building the dam since 1870, so it's really just a shame that they thought about it for 60 plus years before doing anything, and at that point it was too late. Most people thankfully sold their homes to the government before the water got too high, 
and of course abandoned the town. One year before the dam was projected to be finished in 1944, the town was completely underwater. Thankfully, it doesn't appear that anyone died from this incident. They all just left the town due to the crisis. In our number six spot, we have Brovet in France. There is a small village in France called Brovet. I could be pronouncing it wrong, so apologies if I am. This is a very mysterious village as with no warning in the 70s, it was completely wiped off the map after the creation of Canjouz, a military camp. I could also be pronouncing that wrong. I'm not French, so I tried. There are seemingly no reasons why and what adds to the mysteriousness of the situation, even the military eventually abandoned the site, which was being used as a quote unquote training ground and supposedly it was abandoned due to it being too dangerous. Too dangerous for the military? What is there? Some kind of black hole in this village? Let's brainstorm. Do you think it's A, a black hole? B, an alien takeover? Or C, perhaps some kind of accidental nuclear testing was done there and that's why it needs to be abandoned? I don't know, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Whatever the reason, it is extremely weird and suspicious, that's for sure. In our number five spot, we have Indianola. Prior to 1875, there was a town called Indianola that was located in Texas that was thriving. But in 1875, the town was hit by a disastrous hurricane that nearly wiped out the entire population, killing hundreds of people. The town, of course, began to rebuild and persevere after this tragedy, only to be hit again by another massive hurricane and this one was even worse and the town had to be deserted. By 1887 it was declared dead and the post office permanently closed. Much of the town is still underwater today. That's wild. Before researching this video I had no idea about all of these towns that have been submerged underwater and it just makes you think Atlantis could have been one of them at some point in history. I don't know. I believe it. Coming up in our number four spot, we have the town of Ying Shu. In 2008, there was a massive earthquake that completely destroyed the town of Yingshu in China. Before the earthquake, it was home to close to 7,000 people, but the earthquake was so catastrophic that only 2,300 survived. They say about 80% of the town was destroyed. One moment, everything was fine, and the next, half of the population was killed. Just horrific. They have continued to rebuild the town after the event, creating a memorial for those that that lost their life. In our number three spot, we have the town of Bayou Corn. Well, you very well might not know about this one as this was news to me. However, I am Canadian and not American, so that could be why. But man, you would think a story like this would be known by everyone. In 2012, in Bayou Corn, Louisiana, 350 of its town residents were evacuated due to a sinkhole. That's terrifying. Apparently, some of the residents noticed the ground shaking and then bubbles emerged from the water before they were evacuated. How did this happen? Well, it is the result of the collapse of an underground cavern that had been used to store industrial refuse. But honestly, the mysterious thing about this case is that why it happened, the exact culprit, is still a mystery. There have been quite a few lawsuits around this, but not much has changed. In 2018, it was reported that the sinkhole had eaten up 35 acres. Even though the sinkhole is allegedly more stable now, the town has continued to be abandoned. In our number two spot, we have Chernobyl. In 1986, the very disastrous nuclear explosion at Chernobyl in the Ukraine took place and resulted in the evacuation of the people of the town around it. There were more than 100,000 people from the town of Pripyat and around Chernobyl that fled. Dozens were killed and many developed life-threatening illnesses from the incident. But some still stay as it's their home, even though numbers do show a climb in the death rate for the people from that area. Chernobyl is still considered highly radioactive and will not be fully cleared up until 2065, they say. People try and explore the area for adventure, but it is not recommended. In our number one spot, we have Yungay. In Peru, there was a 
thriving town called Yungae that was home to approximately 25,000 people until the 1970s when an earthquake led to a massive rock slide. This rock slide killed most of its people, approximately 30,000 people from Yungae and towns nearby it. Only about 400 or so people survived. Some were people that climbed the town's steps to the cemetery, which was on a hill, and approximately 300 of them were children that were at a circus and a clown led them to a higher ground just in time. Wow. The town now remains as a symbol for the catastrophe. Number 10, play areas. These are really specific to late 90s and early 2000s babies. The dream takes place in an area that's like a kid's play area. There can be bright colors, toys, and wall art. What most stands out though is the animatronics, animals, and trees with faces that can talk. The best comparison I can think of is to what you can find at Great Wolf Lodge. It's very strange, but it's your subconscious going back into your mind and warping memories you had as a child. It's creepy and nostalgic all in one, but just know you're not alone in dreaming these things. Number 9. Grass Hills It's common to dream about being outside with big winding hills that are neon green and a bright blue sky. It's so bright and nice, it's almost unsettling. It can be compared to where the Teletubbies live and almost cartoon looking. Another good example is the landscape home screen from Windows. You know which one I'm talking about. It doesn't quite make sense physically how the hills got there and how they're structured, but there's a sense of familiarness to it. This dream can represent your fear of new responsibilities. You are letting others determine where you go or decide on your goals and you want to explore and experiment. An example of this type of dream is, I was wandering in my backyard and I was chasing a butterfly. As I looked away from a moment, I realized that I was on a hill and all I could see out were more and more hills. When I looked back at the butterfly, it was gone and I was alone in this space I couldn't escape from. Number 8. An empty water park slash pool. It's common to dream about an empty water park or pool area. It's a confined area of water, whereas dreams about open water, lakes, and oceans are seen as being free and endless possibilities, these places are about being contained. It's usually in a dark room or at nighttime, and the water can be green and murky. This type of dream is an indication of anxiety, stress, and other negative thoughts. It could imply that challenging situations are coming your way as a result of lack of preparation and effort. This dream encourages you to work harder and consider the consequences of your actions. An example is, I keep having a reoccurring dream about some kind of abandoned water park. It's like a giant square pool with massive slides going into it, nothing else. And in these dreams, I'm in one of these slides heading into the mossy, dirty, and stagnant water. It's quite horrifying to say the least, and sometimes the dreams lead onto a feeling of drowning. Yikes. Number 7. A parking lot. A dream that comes up for a lot of people is dreaming that you're in a parking lot at night. It's dark and cold, and there are either no cars or only a couple, and I'm not sure which is worse. Usually, you can't make out if you're in a parking lot in front of a store or just out in the middle of nowhere. Dreaming about this means that you're having a problem accepting an aspect of your own character. Somebody may be pretending to be somebody they are not and are hiding under a facade and is a harbinger for someone who is mysterious. An example is, I exited a building at nighttime and I was in their parking lot. There were maybe one or two cars there, no one was around and it made me feel weird. I kept looking around because I felt like someone was watching me and I couldn't shake the feeling. Number 6. An empty hospital. Everyone has had those empty hospital dreams, right? It's dark, the lights are flickering, and most importantly, you're alone. The dream of seeing a deserted and empty hospital has a more personal meaning though. It can mean that you have to stop putting all your hopes into others and pursue your desires. Your goal is usually only about yourself, so you are often the only one who is interested in achieving it. So you have to take the initiative and fight for what you want. An example is, I've been having dreams of different rooms inside an abandoned asylum I've never been to. I dream of different people in there. Sometimes they're chasing after me, sometimes they're lovely and we talk. One time I was in the world war hiding from invading soldiers and they wanted to make me fight for their side. Another time it was me and my two friends I used to live with running towards this huge tree as a swarm of people were trying to get us. Number 5. 
an abandoned food court slash mall. Many people dream about an abandoned food court and mall. It's usually somewhat familiar, like that old mall in your hometown that shut down. It's dark, dingy, and there's an eeriness to it. The floor is filled with pale colored tiles and there's abandoned tables and chairs. Dreaming of this represents the dreamer's feelings of being unwanted or unloved. It may be due to lack of control in your own lives, which reenacts what it would feel like to lose or leave the surrounding things, signifies sadness or depression. Shopping often has to do with making choices and it's associated with decisions and preferences. An example of this dream is I was on a date in a mall that I've known all my life, but it looked very different in the dream. We are talking and having a good time, but the thing was the mall was completely empty and there were no people in it at all. At one point in the dream, we went to an arcade that I've been to as a child. I remembered this arcade as always being one of my favorite places to go as a child, and of course, since the mall was so empty, the arcade was empty too and almost looked run down. In the dream, I felt this sort of sadness on how empty and run down it was, as I always remembered it being a fun and lively place in my childhood. Number four, a dark hallway. This is a creepy one. Dreams about long, dark hallways you can't see at the end of are common. You feel trapped and scared, not knowing where the hallway leads to or if there's anyone else there with you. It's particularly frightening to those who are scared of the dark. It's said that a long and dark passage indicates insecurity, discontent, nostalgia, and worries. If you find yourself in the passage, this means that you are in trouble. If you are brave enough to go through the passage, this suggests that you will overcome difficulties. To dream that you go through a dark tunnel means that you can accomplish what you wish, but first you will suffer some disappointments. An example of this is, I dreamed that I was in prison with my mother. At one point I lost my mother and there was a fire alarm ringing and I was confused and lost and didn't know where to go because there was no guard. So I walked around and fell on the ground where I was looking straight down at a dark hallway but couldn't move a limb. I was completely paralyzed and as I was looking down the hallway I saw two entities that were an in-between of dog and human. They pointed at me and started going towards me and I tried to scream but my mouth was paralyzed too. Number three, waiting in a waiting room. Many people dream of waiting in a waiting room. It could be full of people or empty. It falls with a feeling of doom and there's a yellow tinge to everything. A lot of people don't know what they're waiting for or what the waiting room is for. It could be for a doctor's office, a bank, a work meeting, the possibilities are endless. Waiting can be boring and frustrating, but a dream where you are forced to wait can actually suggest that you need to slow down in a situation where you are too busy to notice that you are unfulfilled. In the dream, it can feel eerie and that you want to leave, but it's telling you to do the opposite in your real life. An example is, basically, there was this laptop said to transfer your consciousness out of your body into some waiting room. It would be for two hours, but that crawled along for me. You were transported to this waiting room with other subjects, but couldn't communicate or leave the room. If you tried, a tall, lanky stick creature would follow you and make screeching noises and chase you until you were transported back into the waiting room. The thing was fast, man. I think I got to a point where I was tired of waiting and I could hear it rambling outside in the dark halls. Number two, doors in the middle of nowhere. Another common dream is seeing doors in the middle of nowhere. No matter if it's in the middle of a field, a body of water, or the middle of a room, it's somewhere where a door shouldn't be. We've all likely heard a number of sayings about doors. Don't close the door on an opportunity, leave the door open for love, when one door shuts, another one opens. Each of these is about being open and available to something. When you dream about an open door or walking through a doorway, this could be about moving forward into a new opportunity in your life. It could be about something you are currently going through or something you are looking forward to, something you yearn for. It's said that seeing doors in your dreams relate to a period of transition or change, whether it's positive and full of opportunity or representative of a more fearful, apprehensive time in your life. Doors can represent mystery in our lives, both good and bad. The doors create a barrier and the unknown lies behind the closed door. Until you open the door, you don't know what's behind it. It's a subconscious thing that many people experience, but it's specific to you and what you're going 
going through in life. And number one, the back rooms. For those of you who don't know, the back rooms is an urban legend. The back rooms are an alternate dimension, but one that is not like many other alternate dimensions in the universe. While others seem to be pocket dimensions that are linked to our own reality, the back rooms runs deep inside our own reality, meaning there is no physical way to enter it. Rather, a person enters the back rooms when in a state of deep despair or during sleep. Ending up in the back rooms is said to be the fate of those who accidentally no-clip through reality and into another dimension. It's described as an endless maze of randomly generated office rooms and other environments. It's characterized by the smell of moist carpet, walls with a monochromatic tone of yellow, and buzzing fluorescent lights. Some may reach the back rooms accidentally on their first attempt, while it may take others hundreds or even thousands of attempts. It's also said that a solitary creature roams the back rooms. It only appears in certain dreams, and the person never sees it. They simply hear its cries and immediately turn and run in the opposite direction. These places are weird and scary, and if you're not prepared to enter the back rooms, people tend to try to wake up from this as fast as they can. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Pine Gap. Pine Gap is a highly secretive Australian intelligence facility located in the remote desert of the Northern Territory, approximately 20 kilometers southwest of Alice Springs. The facility is jointly operated by the Australian government and the United States government's Central Intelligence Agency, better known as the CIA. It is believed that Pine Gap is primarily used for the interception of signals intelligence, including satellite imagery and communications from various locations around the world, but at this point in time, no one is really sure. That is because Pine Gap has long been shrouded in secrecy, and its operations have been the subject of much speculation and controversy. There have been allegations of illegal activities taking place at the facility, including surveillance of Australian citizens and involvement in controversial US military operations. Despite this, the Australian and US governments have consistently denied any wrongdoings, and little is known about the true nature of the activities taking place at Pine Gap. The facility remains one of the most mysterious and secretive military installations in the world. Number 9. Door to Hell Yep, you heard that right. Door to Hell. Many people believe this giant crater in Turkmenistan is a gateway to hell, and I can't say that I really disagree. It's essentially a 230 foot wide pit with glowing red flames and is surrounded by miles of sand. It's said that this place is a natural gas field that collapsed in 1971. To contain the spread of the methane gas, geologists set it on fire and it has been continuously burning ever since. Now, many cultures and philosophies around the world believe in the existence of the underworld, and while there are many places believed to be gateways to the underworld, the door to hell might just be the closest resemblance to this place. To this day, the crater is still burning and no one really knows why. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Yamantau Mountain Complex. The Yamantau Mountain Complex is a highly secretive and heavily guarded underground facility located in the Ural Mountains of Russia. Its purpose and functions are shrouded in mystery, and the Russian government has actually never officially acknowledged its existence. It is believed to have been built during the Cold War as a nuclear weapons storage facility and command center. There is an above-ground town called Mezgor, and that town is super secret and off limits, so much so that people aren't even allowed within the vicinity. And this is all thought to be because this town might be holding the complex underneath it. The underground complex is said to cover an area of over 400 square miles with many tunnels and underground facilities. Its exact purpose and current use remain unknown, with various theories and speculations ranging from a bunker for the Russian government and military leaders to a storage facility for advanced weapons and technology. Some have even speculated that it could be used as a launch site for missiles or a secret laboratory for biological weapons research. Despite many attempts by outsiders to uncover the truth about the Yamantau mountain complex, the Russian government has remained tight-lipped and maintains strict security measures around the area. Number 7. Queen Mary Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction featuring restaurants, a museum, and and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. Apparently, there are resident spirits, including Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter, who was crushed by a watertight door, and the cook, who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But arguably, the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is State Room.
bathroom B340. Reports claim someone was knocking on the door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turned on by themselves, the sink faucet turning off and on on its own, and unexplained bathroom door shutting. Some guests have even reported the covers of their bed being pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. Now, why is it so haunted and seems to be cursed? No one really knows. But if you dare to spend a night there, I'm sure you'll run into something truly terrifying. In our number six spot today, we have Porton Down. Porton Down is located in Wiltshire, England. Hopefully I said that right. I never know. And it is a government research facility. This place was first created in 1916 during World War I, and it was initially built as a testing ground for chemical weapons. Since then, however, it has become one of the UK's leading research centers for defense and security. Here's where things get pretty mysterious, though. The site is surrounded by high security fencing and is very strictly patrolled by armed guards. Of course, what they are doing inside of this facility is highly, highly classified. Porton Down has been the site of several controversial incidents over the years, including the accidental exposure of military personnel to chemical agents during experiments. The facility has also been accused of testing chemical weapons on unsuspecting civilians in nearby areas. In addition, there have been allegations of unethical animal testing practices and human experiments conducted at the facility. Today, the facility continues to conduct research in areas such as disease control, but many of their operations remain a total mystery. Number 5. Okigahara Forest The Okigahara Forest, aka the forest in Japan where people take their lives, is just as terrifying as it is tragic. In front of the entrance of the forest reads, think carefully about your children, your family, and your life is a precious gift from your parents. Every year, hundreds of people go here to end their lives, and the number of deaths here can be estimated from the data collected by the local police through the annual campaign. But how many corpses are recovered annually from here is never disclosed. Why people come and end their lives here is still a mystery, but according to an ancient legend, once in Japan when people were unable to maintain themselves, they were left in this forest where they all died of starvation. It's believed that the ghosts of these dead people hunt for a new soul daily. It's also said that the mournful spirits of those who took their own lives still linger in the woods. Folklore claims they are vengeful, dedicated to tormenting visitors, and luring those who are sad and lost off the paths. Japanese astrologers also believe that the reason for the dust in the forest is due to the power of the strange forces living on the trees, which carry out such incidents. So why so many people feel the need to end their lives there will never be known, and it's such a tragedy. In our number four spot today, we have the Raven Rock Mountain Complex. The Raven Rock Mountain Complex is a highly secure military installation located in Pennsylvania in the United States, and it is often referred to as the quote, underground pentagon. The facility, also known as Site R was built during the Cold War as a backup command center for the Pentagon and was designed to ensure continuity of government operations in case of a nuclear attack. The complex is located inside of a mountain and has a vast network of underground tunnels, facilities, and backup power systems to keep the facility running in case of a disaster, and it is even equipped with communication systems, medical facilities, and living quarters to support personnel in the event of an emergency. Basically, it is everything someone would need in the event of the absolute worst case scenario. Although the site was built for the tense times of the Cold War, it is still in use today, but the functions and capabilities of the site remain classified. We know it serves as a critical facility for the US government and military, and that it has been activated as recently as during the 2020 crisis. Number three, the Alaska Triangle. You've probably heard of the Bermuda Triangle, but have you ever heard of the Alaska Triangle? Probably not. So let me tell you about it. It's a remote area infamous for alien abductions, Bigfoot sightings, paranormal phenomena, and vanishing airplanes. So yeah, the Alaska Triangle has everything the Bermuda Triangle has, but with more mountains and it's cold. Like much of Alaska, the Triangle contains some of the most rugged, unforgiving wilderness in North America. It's an impossibly vast expanse of dense forests, craggy mountain peaks, alpine lakes, and large swaths of plain old wilderness. With all this, it's no shock that people go missing. What is surprising, however, is the sheer number of people who go missing. Add to that the fact that many disappear without a shred of evidence, and bodies dead or alive are rarely found. More than 16,000 people, including airplane 
passengers, hikers, locals, and tourists have disappeared within the Alaska Triangle since 1988. The rate per 1,000 people is more than twice the national missing persons average, and the rate of people who are never found is even higher. The numbers don't lie, and they imply that something else is going on here other than people merely getting lost in the mountains. So what's really going on here? Seems like no one knows, and I do not want to be the one to find out. In our number two spot today, we have the Dugway Proving Ground. The Dugway Proving Ground is a highly secretive and heavily guarded military installation located in the Great Salt Lake Desert of Utah in the United States. It was established in 1942, and it covers an area of 798,214 acres, making it one of the largest military testing facilities in the entire world. The facility is primarily used for the testing and development of chemical and biological weapons, as well as for research and the development of various defense technologies. The Dugway Proving Ground is surrounded by a fence, and access is heavily restricted. The facility has been the subject of much speculation and conspiracy theories, with rumors of secret experiments and cover-ups. In 1968, an accidental release of the VX nerve agent killed thousands of sheep in the nearby Skull Valley, leading to widespread concern and criticism of the facility. Despite its controversial past, however, the Dugway Proving Ground remains an essential part of the United States national security infrastructure, and its operations continue to be shrouded in secrecy. And coming in at number one is North Korea. Yes, North Korea as a whole is just plain terrifying as well as mysterious. Little is known about the country due to their dictator Kim Jong-un's rule. They have many secret missile bases, and they have some nuclear facilities that are a little sus to say the least. Kim is also very strict with his people, and they can't access the internet, and if they do, it can only be government approved sites. The same goes with film and TV. The citizens are also treated horribly there. There's hardly any food and everyone is weak and hungry, and it's even been said that the streets are lined with dead bodies. They also have very strict laws that result in people being executed or sent to prison camps, which are one of the worst forms of torment. Based on the guilty by association principle, they are often imprisoned together with the whole family, including children and the elderly, and including any children born in the camp. A former guard likened the prisoners to walking skeletons, dwarfs, and cripples in rags. He estimated that about 30% of prisoners had deformities such as torn off ears, smashed eyes, crooked noses, and faces covered with cuts and scars resulting from beatings and other mistreatments, and that these people were still forced to work. They had to do hard physical labor in agriculture, mining, and inside factories from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., followed by ideological re-education and self-criticism sessions. The prisoners are forced to sleep in a room with 80 to 90 people in 30 square meter flea-infested rooms, are only occasionally allowed to use the toilet, one for about 300 people, and may only take a shower after several months. No one should have to live like that, and it's horrible. And that's the stuff we do know. Kim is so secretive, I fear that we don't know the true horrors of what goes on in North Korea. And we're starting things off with the Valley of Death in Russia. So for starters, it's earned its ominous nickname as an animal graveyard. Tons of reports have documented these unexplained deaths of various animals in this desolate region, birds, foxes, bears, most of which were seemingly healthy before they died. These mass die-offs baffled scientists for years, making for a real gloomy sense of mystery surrounding the valley, but there actually is a clear explanation for this. All the volcanoes, they emit high concentrations of poisonous gases. These noxious gases, including carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, can pose a serious threat to anyone venturing into the area. The emissions aren't just harmful to human health, Health, you know, which causing dizziness and confusion, but can also be lethal in high concentrations, making this a very dangerous environment for both animals and humans. And the area's remote and inhospitable location also adds to its danger. Situated on the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia's Far East Valley is isolated and uh, difficult to access. Its harsh climate with extreme cold in winter and unpredictable weather patterns also adds to the challenges of exploring it. Number 9. Lake Natrin. This lake in Tanzania has a deadly effect on creatures that happen to come in contact with its waters. The lake
mix extreme alkalinity with a pH level of approaching 10.5 creates an environment so hostile that it can actually calcify the bodies of animals that happen to fly into it. There are high concentrations of sodium carbonate and these minerals in the lake's waters petrify animals, preserving them in these almost stone-like forms. Very fairy tale-esque. Or like a real-life Dr. Stone for all my anime people in the audience. Lake Natron's temperature can also soar to dangerously high levels. It's shallow, sun-exposed waters can reach temperatures of up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius, which is just too hot. The combo of heat and stone transformation has really earned this lake a reputation as one of the world's strangest and, and most dangerous areas. Next up on our list is Madidi National Park in Bolivia. This place has its fair share of hazards, starting with toxic plants and critters lurking within the lush rainforest. Encounters with venomous snakes or contact with poisonous plants can turn a simple hike into a life-threatening situation, so you better make every step you take a cautious one. But that's not all. Tropical parasites are a hidden menace here, and they just happen to be attracted to that red, silky liquid that flows through everyone's veins. So open wounds become a real problem. Their bites can cause serious issues from dizziness to potentially fatal infections. Just so much as a small scratch can lead to a big trouble in this type of environment. Then there are the big predators like jaguars that call this park home. They're stealthy, powerful. Luckily, encounters with them are rare, but they're also potentially deadly. So the thick foliage and rugged terrain make uh, spotting them a challenge. So you never really know if you're being watched either. Plus, they are apex predators, so pouncing on prey without them seeing it coming is kind of their thing. Number seven, the Cave of the Crystals in Mexico. This is a place of extreme danger, mostly due to its unbearable conditions. Once you step inside this honestly, I mean incredibly beautiful underground cave system, you're met with sweltering heat that can reach a staggering 50 degrees Celsius. That's 122 degrees Fahrenheit, I googled it. The cave's relative humidity often surpasses 90%, and this combo of high heat and humidity makes it feel like you're entering a furnace with thick and suffocating air. People who have ventured into the cave have described this experience to be pretty harrowing. As soon as they enter, the oppressive heat and humidity can make them feel as if their body is just dying, in the process of dying. Extreme conditions can lead to dehydration, heat exhaustion, and even heat stroke in a matter of minutes if precautions aren't taken. A lot of them wear these like suits, I guess with like cooling packs on them. The cave's terrain is treacherous. It's enormous some crystals, some reaching up to 39 feet in length, are incredibly fragile, and a single misstep or disturbance can send these things crashing down on you. And at our number six spot, we have Australia's Fraser Island. Just one of the many treacherous places in this uh, wild part of the world. This place poses tons of dangers that make it a hazardous destination, mostly from animals. One of the biggest threats comes from the waters surrounding the island, where you have one of the most dangerous jellyfish species in the world, the box jellyfish, which delivers venomous stings that can be not only excruciatingly painful, but in some cases lethal. Beyond jellyfish though, there's sharks. You may have heard of them. Another nautical nuisance you wouldn't wish to see. The island's waters are home to various shark species with great whites and tiger sharks being the baddest. You won't get much of a break on land though either. Fraser Island is inhabited by crocodiles and dingoes, both of which are dangerous. Uh, saltwater crocodiles in particular are known for their aggressiveness and can be found on the island's estuaries and waterways. Dingoes are typically more elusive but can become aggressive if provoked or if, or if food is left unattended. So keep a close eye on your young ones. If you don't want a dingo at your baby. To Seinfeld reference. That's a Seinfeld reference that probably won't even be left in anyway because I said baby. So, anyway. The island's coastline is also notorious for its strong rip currents, which can easily catch swimmers off guard. These currents are responsible for a number of drownings every year. Number five, North Sentinel Island in India. This island is one of the most dangerous places for outsiders to venture into. The island's isolated indigenous tribe, known as the Sentinelese, have lived there for thousands of years with minimal contact, 
well, really no contact with the outside world, and they are fiercely protective of their isolation. With a history of violently uh, repelling outsiders who approach their land, attempts at contact have often resulted in aggression, with the tribe using arrows and spears to defend their territory. They have this deep-seated mistrust of outsiders due to past incidents of disease, transmission, and exploitation. Another perilous aspect of this island is its lack of you know, of course, immunity to common diseases carried by outsiders. So the Sentinelese have likely not been exposed to these diseases, making them highly vulnerable to infections. Any contact between outsiders and the tribe could result in a devastating disease outbreak among their small population. Island's geography, though, also poses a threat as its coastline is surrounded by treacherous reefs and shallow waters, making access by sea a pretty tough task. At our number four spot, we have Mount Sinabung. The area surrounding Mount Sinabung in Indonesia is incredibly hazardous because of the volcano's frequent and violent eruptions. Mount Sinabung is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, or the region known for its high volcanic activity, making it prone to explosive eruptions and the release of hot ash, rocks, volcanic gases. The volcanic activity has devastating consequences for the people living around it. One of the biggest dangers posed by Mount Cinnabung is its unpredictability. The volcano can erupt suddenly without warning, catching nearby communities off guard, and these eruptions can result in fast-moving clouds of superheated gas, ash, debris that just sweeps down the volcano's slopes, destroying everything in its path. Ashfall is another pair uh, part of living near the area. Eruptions can release massive amounts of ash into the air, blanketing the surrounding areas. Ashfall can damage crops, contaminate water sources, and pose very serious health risks, especially to those with respiratory problems. All of this has forced the evacuation and displacement of these local communities a number of times, especially lately. It seems to be acting up uh, quite consistently. And it, it's just disrupted people's lives, you know, forcing them to abandon their homes and livelihoods. Next up, we have the beaches of the Amazon River. Visitors to these beaches may encounter some of the Amazon's most notorious creatures. You got piranhas, anacondas, electric eels. While the red-bellied piranha is often associated with the Amazon, it's just the tip of the iceberg uh, in a river teeming with life. In fact, the Amazon River is known to host a staggering 2,500 different species of fish, with many scientists believing there are countless more that are yet to be discovered. Piranhas, with their insatiable appetite for meat, pose a threat to swimmers who venture into their territory, of course. Anacondas, some of the largest snakes in the world, are known to lurk in the rivers and can be a danger to both humans and other wildlife. Electric eels, capable of delivering electric shocks, are another potential hazard for those uh, navigating these waters. In its second place, we have Mount Washington. Uh, this mountain may not be very high, but it is renowned for its extreme dangers, making it a formidable challenge, even for very seasoned and experienced adventurers. One of its most notorious hazards is its incredibly strong and unpredictable winds. The mountain has had the highest wind velocity ever recorded on Earth, reaching a staggering 231 miles per hour, or 372 kilometers per hour in 1934. These incredible winds can make you know, simple tasks, like maintaining balance or holding on to gear, difficult. And not to mention, they can throw you off course, so you could get lost pretty easily here. Adding to the danger, of course, you got freezing temperatures and relentless snowfall. Mount Washington boasts some of the coldest and harshest weather conditions in the United States, with temperatures often going well below freezing, even, even uh, during summer. The combination of icy winds, heavy snowfall, can result in whiteout conditions, making navigation treacherous. And then again, you got that wind throwing you off course, potentially. The mountain also has a grim history with its hundreds of fatalities that have happened over the years, often due to the extreme weather and unforgiving terrain. Many hikers and climbers have underestimated the mountain's risks and found themselves in life-threatening situations. Given these dangers, it's pretty essential that only highly experienced hikers uh, should consider embarking on a journey to this mountain, and, and even they need to be well prepared with all the gear and a deep understanding of the area. But last, and certainly not least, is the Alaska Triangle. The Alaska Triangle has become notorious 
for a variety of unexplained phenomena. It's been at the center of numerous UFO and Bigfoot sightings, alien abduction claims, vanishing airplanes, and unexplained disappearances. One aspect of this mysterious region is the significantly higher rate of people going missing, which is twice the national average, apparently. Aside from the strange, spooky stuff going on, though, it's also the harsh landscape itself that poses danger. The area encompasses vast, rugged wilderness where extreme weather conditions, treacherous terrain, and frigid temperatures are the norm. Navigating this type of environment can be perilous for even the most experienced outdoor enthusiasts. But back to the strange stuff though, one of the Alaska Triangle's most famous instances is the Japan Airlines Flight 1628 encounter in 1986. This incident is one of the most well-documented UFO cases in history, as the flight's crew reported encountering three unidentified aerial phenomena during their journey over the sea. Mm -hmm. 